Well, I am two days out from my sort of epic Green Mountain Summit fail. I did get to the summit, but it took me two, uh, two and a half hours to run about five and a half miles, and it was very snowy. And so what I wanna do in this video is talk about the recovery from an effort like that, because uh, I was not really ready to be on my feet for two and a half hours. I was not ready for the kind of vertical that I covered. And I certainly wasn't ready for just the slipping and the sliding and, and all of the movement that I did uh, last Saturday. So now it's Monday morning. Now I wanna talk about what you do the next run because there's a big risk of injury after you do something that was maybe a little bit too risky, a little bit too intense, a little bit too long. And I feel right now like I could get hurt today if I go do something a little bit too challenging. And so I have a bunch of things that I like to do in my own training that helps reduce my injury risk when I'm very sore or very tired. So let's get into some of those. So since my first goal is reducing injuries, I'm gonna do a bunch of things that are going to combat the three twos of why most runners get hurt. And this is from my old college coach. He used to say that you get hurt because you do too much, too soon, too fast. So. If you wanna stay healthy, we need to mitigate the three twos. So the first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take a day off. Yesterday, I took a day off. I still got in a lot of steps. I went to the zoo with my family. We walked around a lot. I did some therapeutic or rehabilitative exercises in the morning, uh, and that just helped get my legs feeling a little bit better, uh, get some extra blood flow before I went to the zoo and really looked around and you know did a lot of walking. It probably wasn't the best idea because I was on my feet for like three hours, three and a half hours. Uh, and that was certainly really, really fatiguing. But nevertheless, uh, I think it's better than just sitting on your butt all day and not doing anything. So step one, take a day off the next day. Now step two is what you're gonna do the next day. So this is today for me. First thing I'm gonna do is a really thorough warm up, And I just did that at home. I did a full standard warm up, uh, a couple of other mobility exercises taken from the ITB rehab routine. And I just really wanna make sure that I'm warm and feeling as good as possible before you even start the run. Next thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna walk for a minute or two. And so I'm walking down my street just so that I can further get some blood flow going and, and really help my legs just ease into that run as much as possible. So that's step two. Step three is reducing the repetitive nature of running. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna wear different shoes than what I wore just the other day. So I wore my more structured pair of Nikes. Uh, that was great, felt good on the run, uh, besides being a little slippery, but at the same time, I wanna do something a little different today. So I am wearing my Nike Freeze. Super minimalist, they're very comfortable, I love them. Let's get going. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna vary the terrain. Now I was running up and down a mountain on Saturday. And so this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run as flat terrain as I can. I'm really trying to vary the stimulus that I'm experiencing today compared with the stimulus that I got on Saturday and why I'm really sore and tired right now. So again, big goal today is variety. Do something different than what I did on Saturday, and that's really gonna help me avoid a repetitive stress injury. Now, this shouldn't come as a surprise, but I'm gonna run really slow today. Low intensity. There's no performance expectations on this run. The goal here is simply recovery. So I'm gonna run, nice easy effort. I don't care what the watch says. I'm just having a good time. And even, even though I'm running really slow, even though I'm wearing different shoes, I warmed up really well, I'm on, also on different surfaces than what I ran on Saturday. On Saturday, I was running on snowpack. Today I'm running on a variety of different surfaces, mostly this amazing crushed cinder path 
one of my favorites for running. If you find yourself in the situation like me, where you might have done a little bit too much too soon or something that was too fast, and you wanna continue training while reducing your injury risk, I hope these tips have been helpful for you. Now, a couple things that I won't do. I won't run hard in any way, even, even if that means just running at a more moderate effort because I feel good. Today is the day for me to really keep myself in check, so I will not try to run fast in any way. I also won't run strides, so I'm really trying to take out anything that is speedy, anything that is difficult. And in that same theme there, I'm not gonna do anything that requires a lot of skill. And drills is a good example that requires a lot of skill. Drills, any kind of explosive power movement, that also, it's kind of a bad idea because I've lost some coordination, some athleticism because of the level of fatigue that I'm experiencing right now. And I don't wanna put myself in a position where I'm trying to run really fast, close to my max velocity, or I'm in the gym and I'm trying to, you know, do a complicated Olympic lift. I'm not gonna do anything like that because my nervous system is fatigued. And so if you are in a similar situation, you should probably take out anything that is on one end of that extreme. Anything super technical or that requires skill or anything that is very intense. You know, maybe you are, uh, you have a workout planned. It's probably not a, not a good idea. If you're really sore or fatigued, let's take out the strides too, like I'm doing today. And these are some really great options of prioritizing recovery 100% so that you can hopefully stay healthy and keep on with your training. The other thing is you gotta be flexible. I was gonna run five miles today, but then I realized that I did not budget my time appropriately and I'm only gonna have time for three or four miles, partly because I'm making this video, especially on those days that aren't super important. You know, it's not a long run, it's not a workout, it's not a skill day where you might be doing a lot of drills. It's okay to cut it by a mile or so, you know, a couple miles if you need to. If you're sore, you gotta be flexible and kind to yourself so you're not just worrying so much about this missed training because it's not really that big of a deal. In truth, long term, you might actually be more consistent by being more consistent in the long term by being less consistent in the short term. And what I mean by that is you simply taking a little bit of time off that you need every once in a while so that you don't get hurt, so that you miss the big injuries that come every once in a while because you don't miss a little bit of small amount of some time. It's just a longer term way of thinking about your training, of thinking about adaptation, because my body really doesn't know the difference between four or five miles at this point. Yours probably doesn't either. What really matters is the bulk of your work over time. So cut the run if you need to. You're gonna be a better runner for it in the future. All right, I'm all done. I had to cut it a little short because I have a meeting that starts in less than 10 minutes and I don't manage my time well, but I'm really glad that I was able to get in uh, a nice easy run, uh, especially after uh, just how I feel based on Saturday. So I hope this was helpful as you guys think about, you know, how you recover from your workouts. And this was certainly, you know, more of a training focused piece of content on recovery because, you know, there's things that you can do in your training, like we talked about today, that can help mitigate your injury risk, especially when you're really sore or tired. Now, of course, real recovery depends on how well you're sleeping, how well you're eating and staying hydrated, your overall stress levels, whether or not you can find time to relax in your life. So there's certainly a lot of things that go into recovery, but as you go through your training, there are gonna be times when you mess up, when you make a mistake, when you do too much, too soon, too fast. And some of these mitigation strategies might help you come back from that workout that or long run that was a little bit too hard so you can keep on training so if this was helpful for you i'd so appreciate that thumbs up 
and hit that subscribe button. We're doing a lot of video lately and I don't want you to miss any. Stop.